Okay, John here at uh, Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm going to be riding my bike uh, out to cul-de-sac in Tempe uh, to check out this new uh, car-free development, uh, car-free community. So looking forward to it. We're going to start off here on a canal path uh, right from the 44th Street uh, transit stop, the SkyTrain stop, uh, which is also the beginning of the metro. So I also have the option of being able to jump onto the light rail system and ride uh, pretty much right to the doorstep of the cul-de-sac neighborhood. Uh, but I wanted to see what it would be like to ride it. So let's get on out there and do it. It's too nice of a day not to. All right, let's go. And just to give you a little bit of a bearing as to what I'm talking about here, uh, right over there is the uh, Sky Train drop off and the beginning of the Metro light rail, and then a nice pedestrian path uh, leading to the station, and then right on up to the bike path here, the multi use path. And here's my trusty Brompton. Let's hop, head on out on the road. Okay, and we are rolling. Access point here, and off we go. I can already tell I'm uh, slightly overdressed. <laughs> I've got pants on. I'll probably have to shed these uh, before too much longer. But uh, it was actually pretty chilly this morning in Austin. Just about 44 degrees. Pardon my translation, I'll have to do that in post-production for Celsius. Sorry guys. I always know that freezing is right at zero, so that's easy. Okay, so it looks like we have to maneuver over to this spot to get our crossing for the trail. And again, we are at 44th Street, and that was the 44th Street station, the SkyTrain, and the Metro. And here we go. As you can tell already, this is a really nice pathway here. Not sure how long we'll be on this pathway, but it's sure nice to have it while we have it. it looks like we've got some wayfinding across the bridge to the Pueblo Grande Museum. Very cool, and some more wayfinding and information signs. That sign talked a little bit about first communities, some of the indigenous populations that lived here in the Phoenix, in the Tempe area. And it looks like we've got some old stuff over in here, perhaps some historical grounds. And some more information signage. It's a very nice day here today. Not too hot, certainly not chilly at all. Good to be back in the desert. It has been a long time since I've been here. Aha. <laughs> this looks like a fun crossing here. A little rough transition here.
looks like we'll be on this section for about two miles. That should be fun. Unfortunately, a lot of litter looks like from homeless camps in the area. Again, much of the west, southwest, even Pacific Northwest is really dealing with a lot of housing issues and homelessness issues that need to be dealt with and rectified. Certainly outside my area of expertise, but I do note it when I see it from an active mobility perspective and as it starts to impact the safe and inviting atmosphere of the active mobility facilities. And again, this canal that we're uh, rolling past is a crucial irrigation canal for the area. And you can tell that the environment here, as we're rolling past some quasi-industrial sort of areas, looks like we've got some stone and rock, some railroad ties, perhaps it's a landscaping business. But you can tell that there's a lot to be worked on in terms of making this a much more welcoming environment for people to use. It looks like we do have lighting here, so that's always nice, especially when we're here in the winter. We have shorter days. It's certainly nice to have that ability to ride in low light conditions or in the darkness. And it looks like we have sort of a docking area or switching area or maintenance area for the light rail over here. One of their main facilities. And it does look like these are light rail that is powered by electricity. You can see the overhead lines here. Although I chose not to jump on the uh, light rail today, since it's such a nice day, I'll have to be sure to uh, jump on the light rail for a couple trips, see what it's like, take the Brompton with me. Haven't seen too many people riding on this trail as of yet, although there are a couple. We're heading towards the city of Tempe. So that's what we will see ahead of us in terms of some of the structures. Okay, it's not super obvious where I'm supposed to go. I see a bike over this way. So as you can tell, very little uh, wayfinding in this particular location. But I saw that bike pop out from over there. Interesting. He came out from over there. We may pop back over there in a second. I just want to check and see if I'm missing something over here. Okay, doesn't look like it. Now that looks like a whole bunch of improvement area over here. And you can see some lighting that has been installed. Let's just take this little cut through over here. 
This might be sort of a rough transition between municipal jurisdictions and they haven't quite made that connection yet. So let's go give this a shot. Property owned by the United States. Okay. Oh, interesting. There's wayfinding right over here. Let's go over to the other side. Yeah, we're going to go to the other side. I see the Grand Canal Path branding over here. So let's go take a look. development, a hotel, mid-rise office, low-rise office, residential, and retail all outlined on that map. And we've got the multi-use path, which I'm assuming we are on right here at the canal. And up ahead, I think, is the Roosevelt Dam feature. All right, let's go check it out. Big U.S. Bank building here, and some more office park buildings. There you go, Theodore Roosevelt Dam. Cool. Little cobblestone feature there near the crossing. And speaking of residential housing, it looks like we have some here, right along the trail pathway. Very nice. And we're gonna find out if this all connects to anything very soon. solid bollard structure there making it obvious to any drivers that they should not go down this way uh oh had some blood damage here okay i'm gonna take a drink of water Okay, we're rolling again. Grab a drink of water. There's another residential complex here. You saw a gate back there connecting them to this pathway. I did take a quick glance at the map 
And right up there is the light rail line. I believe that's probably the line I would have been on had I decided to take the light rail. Nothing against taking public transit, but when I saw that this was a pathway, a multi-use pathway, pretty much the majority of the way there, I was like, you know, I gotta give it a try. I know this is gonna throw me out onto some pretty crazy streets in just a matter of moments, like literally right up here. But I had to at least ride some of it, if not the whole way. We shall see. And this is another nice feature, as you can see, we have nice pathway connection to the light rail station here. see that we are officially in the city of Tempe, home of the Arizona State University Sun Devils. like we're going to be on this street, North Mill Avenue, for about one mile. Certainly not a very heavily traveled road, at least not at this time of day. By the way, it's, I think it's about 1.30. 1.45 in the afternoon on Wednesday. Here the first full week in December. <laughs> Interesting striping plan for this bike lane where we have a cushion over here for the pedestrians and yet you have the bike lane right next to the motor vehicle travel lane I think I'll just ride the white line what do you think and this is the lake here lake tempe i think is the name of it you can see quite a few office buildings here in tempe again university town probably a short light rail ride to downtown phoenix 
but Tempe is a city, a vibrant place in and of itself. And you can see one of the interesting topography things is you'll see mountains peeking through the buildings because there are beautiful natural features all around the valley here. Little mountain peaks poking up, providing wonderful little hiking opportunities really. Like there's a bunch of signs over there indicating the past of that building. It's probably some sort of an agricultural grain type silo. To confirm that, I'll probably have to go and actually explore it later when I'm not carrying my luggage. We are into the urban setting here in downtown Tempe. And you can immediately see a lot more pedestrian activity, outdoor cafes. You can still kind of hear the constant jet noise. Tempe is very much in the flight pattern for the Phoenix International Sky Harbor Airport. first time I spent any significant time here in Tempe. I've been to Phoenix many times over the years, many times, but uh, it's been many, many years, over a decade I think, and I've never really spent any time here in the downtown area of Tempe. Definitely comes across as a university town. It's got that vibe to it, for sure. I just uh, needed to get another drink of water and get my bearings here. We're going to be heading down this street, University Drive. So this is quite the uh, monster street, as you can see. Um, they've got it all paved in sort of a paver stone approach. You can certainly hear 
that texture on the motor vehicle tires as they go over it. Um, it seems like a little bit like lipstick on a pig in the sense that the, the lanes are just so incredibly wide and way too many of them. So I don't know how much it actually encourages people to slow down. If you noticed, quite a few of the pavers were all beat up, which is a point that uh, Stefan Bear made when I interviewed him, is that when you use pavers and bricks in a setting where the vehicles, there's too many vehicles and too higher speed, they'll beat them up and you'll go through them a lot quicker, so not ideal. the Sun Devil, Sun Devil Stadium off to the left, the official Arizona State University sign is here, looks like they're doing some landscaping and lighting work around the sign, and yeah, here you go, let's run a strode right through the middle of campus, <laughs> and uh, that's not much fun. Alright. I may want to cut through campus. Let's, let's check this out here. Okay, so my instructions in my ear were to get onto this path. And sure enough, that's where I should be mainly because I'm turning right up here very soon and so being on this cycle path here as part of the campus actually sets me up a little more sets me up a little bit more intelligently because this is what we're going to turn on we're going to turn down this little area Cool, nice little car go back there.
Okay, so I had to swap out a battery, make my way across that intersection. Uh, I walked that length right there, basically a little more than 22 seconds to get across that uh, street. Um, yeah, right at the university, right at transit stop. Seems a little strange that we have such big streets right there, but we are in Arizona. Okay. We are getting closer to our destination, thankfully. And we're on a nice little quieter street here. This is a multimodal street. We see the tram tracks right there, the streetcar line. Be nice if we had this up at the sidewalk level for riding. You get a lot more people riding if you do that. See lots of housing here. Again, this is Arizona State University. If not the actual campus, then just off of campus. And you can see that the distances are very conducive to riding, scootering. So having this transformed into a more welcoming all ages and abilities cycle network would really help out a lot. Looks like that property is going to go under review for potential redevelopment. we go and again you can see pretty heavy pedestrian activity university students getting to and from the campus you might notice that I'm sitting up a little higher certainly you noticed <laughs> I had to raise my saddle up a little bit, had it just a tad too low. So we're going to be turning left here at Apache. And uh, looks like we're going to do this stage here. And again, there's the uh, streetcar line, the tram. And that's this is Apache, so this is the street that the cul-de-sac development is located on. So, we'll be heading down that direction. Disappointing the amount of prioritization towards the movement of cars. Again, love that this is multimodal, but come on guys, you have more than enough space to have made this over here a really wide multi-use path multi-modal path i suppose i could have taken it it's about 10 feet if it were 12 to 14 feet it would be incredibly tempting but i just want to give you all an idea of what this is like riding in Arizona on a painted bike lane. Are you scared yet? <laughs> Fortunately, the drivers are not way out of control, at least not at the moment, but 
when you look at these dimensions and you look at how wide open the tarmac is here you can certainly get a sense as to how crazy fast drivers must go here this guy on his personal scooter zipping along banner there bus bike walk rail that's all great you can do all sorts of flags encourage but you got to build the infrastructure folks time to rest okay so we are here on Apache we're at Elm to the right here, Una Butte Avenue to the left. And I see a whole bunch of construction up ahead and some white structures. That just might be our development. We shall see. I was thinking it was a little further out than this, but uh, yeah, we'll find out in a moment or two. And you see some more scooter riders person on a bike pedestrian activity is not anywhere near as intense here as we saw right by the university campus and that's because we're a couple miles out now so that kind of makes sense definitely get from an urbanism perspective you can sort of see we're at a transition zone in the sense that we've got some old stuff and we've got some new and oh there's a light rail station right there very nice see this Silverado is going to turn on red. Again, that's one of the reasons why we'd like to see right turns on red banned. Yeah, they clear out cars. That's all fine and dandy, except for they're not looking for anybody who might be walking across the street. Of course, we have a red right now at this stage, but it's not to say that a pedestrian might have a leading interval or even a person on a bike for that matter so all right a little bit of shade here and that's the clintock drive and apache boulevard station and i think we're definitely a little further out but you can definitely see we've got a lot of housing going in here so and that makes sense this is a transit stop you want to have a lot of housing within what what did uh, Tristan say within that first hundred meters now, ideally, we'd have cool stuff to draw people in and businesses, so we're lacking that. But uh, there's definitely a bunch of housing and big police substation here. Okay. And we've 
got some retail on the first floor, possibly of these, an older community there, and out we go, a little further out. Here we go, the old Apache Inn. Okay, we are approaching Martin Lane and Martin Lane Apache Transit Stop. stop for cul-de-sac and this is the development this is it and here's Archer bikes this is the bike shop that is has opened up here fantastic we're gonna go up here to the ramp and uh, take a look here is the development that's going in across the street. This is the rest of the block here for cul-de-sec. So, first glance, folks, here it is. Very exciting. You can get a sense as to what that was like on Apache Drive, Apache Boulevard and the two different uh, transit stations that were nearby, close by, and get a little bit of the passageways, the walkways through here. We'll come back and talk to uh, these folks here a bit later. Hey, hey how's it going? Hey. <laughs> get a sense what this is all about. like this is street corner urban market lots of bike parking here cochina chivas very nice oh this is cool i'm gonna check this out so this is covered bike parking here very nice Swing back around, get a good look at that wall. Again, take a look at this crossing here too. So this is very nice that they were able to get such a substantial crossing in. Um, certainly hope they do the same with the, uh, the development across the way there. And here we are, Electric Avenue, short for electric obviously and street corner street corner urban market very very cool we'll definitely be paying a visit to that 
right, cool. Well, hey, that wasn't too bad. You never know what it's going to be like when you try to ride a bike away from an airport. And uh, really, hey, uh, we made it in one piece. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the ride. And if you did, please, hey, give it a thumbs up. We'll leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And up next is going to be a quick uh, little tour, mini tour of the complex uh, with Alexis. So tune back in. Uh, well, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much. <laughs>